All right, here's the uh, vent reducer attached to the uh, reflector shade. <clears throat> you can see the JB Weld here. I've actually sanded it already. Um, but essentially what I did was um, insert the vent reducer all the way in until one of the rims, um, um, mending rim here or joining rim here, uh, backed up against the inside of the uh, shade here. And then you can see here, you can see some of the yellow epoxy. I put three beads of yellow epoxy on the inside. That set it up um, so it wouldn't move because that was fast curing epoxy. And then that allowed me uh, 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 working time and room to go ahead and apply the JB Weld. Make sure you mix up enough JB Weld. Uh, it takes quite a bit, uh, two very large beads. And then don't be afraid to get it on your finger. It's not a bad epoxy. It comes off quite easy with uh, mineral spirits. Um, so you can take your finger and just smear it on. You can also wet your finger with water if you want it to go really smooth. Just smear that on really good. Make sure you press it into the seam nicely. Let that cure and dry overnight and then sand it. After the JB Weld cured and I sanded uh, and uh, this is all set up, uh, I went ahead and uh, broke out the uh, ChefMate uh, diffusing material, cutting pad, and I laid it on a flat surface and I traced out the inside, uh, the inside with a pencil and then the outside with a pencil and then uh, just used a pair of scissors and cut this out of the ChefMate uh, cutting mat. So this is going to be the diffuser that will attach. This will be the diffuser that we attach over the ring light. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and trace out the pattern for the uh, uh, the flash unit. In this build, this is only my second build on the ring flash. Uh, I'm going to be building it for a Nikon Speedlight SB800. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of paper and I'm tracing out the flash head on the paper and then I'm going to cut that out as a template. This is the cutout for the Canon Speedlight 580EX on my existing build. Uh, I lined it with foam so that it wouldn't scratch the flash. Here's the SB800. You want to adjust the head such that <clears throat> the controls are upward. So here's your, here's your ring flash. Um, you're going to be mounting it as such, just like this. So with your template, you need to mark with your template which side the rim of the ring flash is. So when you place your template on approximately there, you're going to cut it out correctly so that the flash head mounts correctly. Otherwise, if you flip this around, you're going to be cutting the template wrong and you might have to scrap the project or fill that hole and cut another hole. Okay, there's the trace template for the SB800 Nikon Speedlight. All right. Next step is to uh, cut this out. Um, not an easy task, so uh, be careful again. It's uh, sharp when it's cut. I'm going to use a uh, drill to uh, uh, cut a starter hole. And here's your tin snips. Again, wear safety, safety glasses. A little larger bit. Okay, now that you've got a uh, nice starter hole, uh, you're going to begin uh, trimming with your uh, tin snips. Be very careful. Uh, cut on the inside of the line. Uh, test your hole size with your flash. It's probably going to be a little too small, obviously, which is good. You want a nice tight fit. What you'll end up doing is taking a Dremel sanding wheel and uh, uh, smoothing that out and uh, opening the uh, hole just a little bit larger. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the uh, flash access port that's cut out. Um, use these tin snips. Now the next step is to use your trusty Dremel. So this is definitely a tool that you'll probably need to invest in if you don't have it. If you're a hobbyist, these are, uh, these are invaluable, really. Um, I took my gloves off. I have better control with this Dremel. I'll just show you, demonstrate here what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up some of these edges and some of the edges I couldn't get a clean cut close to the line. I'm going to bring that in tighter. Got to be very careful here. Wear eye protection, preferably goggles. Uh, there's just a lot of shavings that fly all over the place, so be very, very careful.
Okay, after about 20 minutes of dremeling and uh, checking and rechecking for uh, the fit with the flash, uh, I've got just about the right fit. Uh, there's a little bit of slack in there, probably uh, roughly uh, 32nd to a 16th of an inch, uh, which is okay because we're going to line this with some type of per, uh, uh, soft, resilient uh, material to protect the flash head. I might actually go with duct tape this time. But uh, next step, you want to take uh, some sandpaper and just uh, clean up the edges. Okay, now that I've got the hole cut out for the flash head, next step is to take my diffuser ring that I cut out and uh, mark the spots for drilling holes in the, uh, in the rim around the ring light here to fasten the diffuser uh, with uh, zip ties. After you're done drilling out the holes in the diffuser, line up your holes, verify everything looks good, and that step is complete. Now I think I'm ready to go ahead and prime the outside of the shade and paint it black along with this sleeve. Okay, there's the reflector shade ring flash primed and painted. Okay, next step we're going to bend the bar stock. The first bend we're going to make is this bend right here. This is two and a quarter inches. Now in this second build that I'm doing, this is a Nikon SB800 and here's the sink cord. It has a threaded mount in the bottom of the sink cord. So instead of tapping this hole here, I'm just going to drill a quarter inch hole for the screw here to screw through the plate and into the hot shoe um, sink cord mount. Okay, I came down three quarters of an inch and drilled a quarter inch hole for the uh, uh, sink cord to mount. Then two and a quarter down, we're going to bend to 90 degree. Okay, that's the first bend, that's complete. Um, second bend will be a 90 degree bend at roughly three and a half inches here. This is a critical bend because it's going to uh, uh, set the depth off of the uh, ring flash for you. Okay, here's where you might need an extra hand. What I'm doing here is I'm determining where the bend is. So we've got the duct tape in the hole, we've got the flash mounted, we got the first two bends done. This is the most critical bend right there where I have it marked. Use something straight and uh, just hand jig up your uh, setup. It's very important, very critical to get that bend flush and correct so that your uh, flash is mounted correctly and will uh, hang tight in its position. Uh, the next step that we're doing here is uh, mounting the flash. We stuck the uh, entire end of that last bend through the uh, the ring flash and we're going to do a, uh, a loose mount of the flash to determine where we're going to put the hole for the camera and also where to cut off the excess to mount to the bottom of the uh, ring flash. Okay, we made the first hole and tapped it and here's the uh, captive screw here to mount the camera. Okay, here it is with the uh, D200 Nikon mounted with the Sigma 150 and teleconverter and the SB800. Next step is to apply foam to the bar and foam on the inside uh, of the uh, reducer and then uh, of course attach the diffuser. Here we are, uh, final product. Um, we put the foam here on the on the uh, base stay that we made. The SB800 going into the ring flash. Zip tied the, uh, the diffuser on the front. Take a quick shot here of this ornament. <clears throat> Looks good.